with Saturday's Devon Expressway Derby at St James's Park fast approaching, we put together a special edition of Replay. This week we are joined by living Argyle legends Roman Lario, Ian Stonebridge and Mickey Evans to look back on one magical Derby day 11 years ago. With the Pilgrims in 8th position and after a fairly shaky start to the season, they travelled down the A38 on a Tuesday night in September for what will be remembered as one of the greatest expressway derbies of all time. Uh, obviously I was excited because um, I had played one before, in my first six months. I played the, the game at home park in the old home park that we won. It's, you know, you want to be involved in games like that, um, but I think having considered the, the run that the team was on at the time, and I think I probably hadn't been involved as a starting player in, in all of those games or even any of them, I can't, can't remember exactly, but um, you know, so you expect a team that's doing well and winning games to be settled. This time I saw Plymouth Argyle play was a way to Exeter. That's right. And, yeah. and, uh, Obviously, you always uh, take those games as a player because even if you, I had nothing to do with the rivalry because I was a new foreigner, you could see you could see how how much he meant with some of the boys who'd been there for for, for longer. Uh, there were great games playing, obviously, talking and Exeter. Um, I think I was lucky enough to probably be on the winning side most of the time. The first time was very blurry. It's very blurry in my mind. I can't. I remember we were down at half time because we had we had severe telling off by the manager. Second half, we come out. I think we play, if I remember rightly, I think we played really well. Second half, um, I managed to get, I think, keep him in a mistake really coming from the ball. But I think Martin Phillips probably had one of his finest games for his football club. Momentum was back with us, and uh, and yeah, well, then Buster, Buster got that ball where he wants it, and then that was it, really. He knew there was only one place he's going in his. On, on, on the six yard box, so you just need to get yourself there, and he did. And to be fair to Stoney, it was a great finish. I think I had a decent run on, on the defender, you know, I wouldn't say I've got a massive a massive leap on me, but um, having that, that momentum and that, that kind of spring to when you're on the move already enables you to get a bit higher. And I think, you know, decent contact on the ball, and, and you know, I couldn't necessarily tell you where it went in the goal, but we, we knew it had gone in, obviously. You know. Sometimes you need like a derby game to really get you going and uh, get your season going, I think that probably did it for us. De deliver the cross deep towards Frio, it's a little too high for him, with Vinci picking it up on this near side. Ball was out there, ball, came, ball went out of play, but they let it go. Up on this near side, has he taken it too far? Well he's got the cross in towards Nicky Banger, chance for Phillips! And Martin Phillips has put Plymouth Argyle in front against his old club. Must have got a bit of stick for that, didn't he? Thank that you for celebration. <laughs> oh, what a start for Argyle. Less than five minutes played. <laughs> he was a bit all pumped up with that game. <laughs> he got a bit of grief from their fans, I think, if I remember rightly. Celebrating, he's delighted. His second goal for Argyle. Well, he's never been a it's, nice, it's nice to see Buster who actually played for Exeter as well to see the, the joy when we scored. And I've never seen him so excited because he was the most mellow man in the world, Buster. He's never been a prolific goal scorer by any means, Martin Phillips. It was Brian McGlinchey who set it up, did very well to get the cross in towards the far post. It fell for Phillips and he tucked it firmly into the corner. Very good work from Brian McGlinchey. The Exeter players just appealing as if the ball might have gone out. I don't think it did. Referee didn't. Yeah, that one will count. Plenty of big men forward for Exeter. Curled in towards Steve Flat. In fact, it's turned in by Chris Curran, of all people. I don't think there's a lot else I could have done on this one. It's a reverse header, so they are, for, for my position, I, I can't really see much. I don't even know who heads it, I think. I only find out after the game. Another man to get a goal against his former club. Well, he spent two years at Argyle as a defender. He got up in front of Steve Flack, just got the flick, and nothing. That's a good goal, anyway, isn't it? Very good goal by them. Nothing Romain Lario could do about that one. Chris Curran. Well, he doesn't score too many goals, but he'll treasure that one, that's for sure. It's David's man as well. Well done, David. <laughs> <laughs> This is Breslin. Good to spread it wide for Christian Roberts, who's made a great run. Good save from the goalkeeper. Hello, Ralph. That's a good save, though. 
a move that perhaps deserved a goal then. But they didn't get one because of the form of Romain Lario. Roberts taking up a great position, but good goalkeeping from the Frenchman. Chip towards Christian Roberts, but whether it will want it to run out of play. It's just it might have reminded Bezzi of that at half time. <laughs> it's not going to though. Roberts has nicked in beside him. And now Jeff Breslin in there. Can't quite get the shot away. It'll come for Roberts. And it's in the net. Christian Roberts. So we've gone absolutely ballistic. Strikes a second for Exeter. Stoke will go mad. If I remember rightly, he did half time. Well, it was Roberts's persistence which paid off. He nicked it away from Bez Weatherick in towards Breslin. Shots one and two blocked, and eventually. And then we do well there. We try to clear, we don't, and then boom, great finish. Barlow has Breslin to his left. Black is up ahead of him. Barlow and McCarthy making their way into the middle. Could run this from Breslin. Now he's picked out Christian Roberts. Chance for him perhaps to drive the shot in. Oh, what a good effort! And what a superb save from Romain Lario. He was normally a nuisance to us, wasn't he? Christian Roberts. He was, he was busy anyway, he was one of the best strikers in our league. And Roberts can hardly believe it didn't go in. Well, a good ball from Jeff Breslin. Roberts seizing his chance, struck it well. And that is good goalkeeping. He really did get plenty of power behind it. It was in the right area. He did, he kept us in it, to be honest. To be fair to him, he did keep us in it, if I remember rightly. The great, that is a great save. Mario forced to defend again as the corner comes across. It'll come back for Barlow. Oh, he's hit the post. Well, Roman Lario had hardly had a chance to recover his breath. Martin Barlow, that would have been a sweet strike from him. Oh, wow. Just kind of misread that one. He fell for Barlow, struck it well. And Lario was nowhere there, really. Wow. Oh, he misread that one as well. Hit the post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's funny because Chopsy hit the, hit the post there. And I was renting his house. I was living in his house in February <laughs> last year. And I stayed here for 18 months. Now we, uh, yeah, we became good friends. McCarthy and Flack and Watson. Oh, well, they're only getting it half away. Christian Roberts with the strike, and that's another fine save from Robert Lario. What a great save by Bill. He thought the squad also got his squad, which is good. That's the one when the, everybody thinks if you squad and you save it, all of a sudden the stadium goes quiet for half a second. And it's the best feeling in the world if you're a goalkeeper. He had a good game, Rover once, didn't he? <laughs> made, made a change. Watson not quite sure where the ball has gone. It's come for Lucky Banger. Is this the goal? Yeah, yeah I think it is. Isn't it? Now Phillips. Breslin and Power. Boston normally couldn't kick it in that far. Power getting goal side of him. Good cross in though, and it's been turned in by Michael Evans. Well, Martin Phillips provided the cross for it. Uh, Michael Evans getting the equaliser. Yeah, funny, I remember that one being a bit straighter on than it was. I didn't realise Bustard played it from out wide. So I made it two each again, yeah? Yeah. Back in the game. But again, I think you have to ask question marks about the goalkeeping here. Phillips delivering the cross. Greg coming for it, not getting there. And a simple tuck in from Michael Evans. Good cross from Phillips, but you feel as if the goalkeeper should... A lot younger, a lot thinner, and more hair. <laughs> Evans looking for space to turn, he's found a little bit of it. And a good save from Matthew Gregg. Yeah. The shot from outside the box, was very unusual. Well, Michael Evans suddenly stealing half a yard then. And to be fair, there's not much difference in what you're saying that. I'm posing a few problems. Just picked up the throw, good little turn, and driving it in for Greg to make the save. Well, we're going to see two minutes of stoppage time. Two minutes for one of these two sides to secure all three points. Both of them seem to be going for it. This is Martin Phillips. Need to get the cross in towards Stonebridge. And Ian Stonebridge has surely sealed it for Plymouth Argyle. But it's Martin Phillips, who was again the architect there. Mm. Yeah, diff slightly different actually, even though I've seen it, it's slightly different than I remember it. 
in the build-up. Another pinpoint cross from the former Exeter player. And he's delighted, as is Ian Stonebridge. And we think that Paul Sturridge is, Paul Sturridge is pretty clean, pleased as well now. He played well in that night, Buster. Very, very, very well. There he is, Stoney at the front post. I've never seen him so excited. Him and Buster were mad. Being a derby match, being the winning goal, obviously, it's, it's, it's special. Yeah, I didn't remember being involved in the build-up, and obviously you saw there that, that Buster cut back as he, not, as he often did. And the fact that he's crossing it that way, away from the goal as well, means that the head is slightly easier. I, yeah, wouldn't have told you that the, the ball was outside the post either. I could have sworn I was in the middle of the goal, kind of headed it, but yeah, interesting. You know, the runs that we went on that season, obviously, you know, we, we all know where they ended up. Um, and, and as I mentioned before, you know, that derby match coming in the middle of that perhaps was a, could have been a, an opportunity for the season to go either way. Um, you know, derby matches have that effect, I think. They, they could disrupt things or they can be a springboard. And for us, it was certainly a springboard to, to go on and progress through the season. It was a confidence builder, yeah, definitely winning that game. Any, winning any game gives you confidence, but... <clears throat> The, the, I, I can't remember their position at the time in the league, but we we were starting to uh, we probably had four or five results by then. I think we'd beaten Torquay already mm -hmm. in that in, in and around the same period. So it was just nice to just to get a win out of the way in difficult uh, circumstances. Different times, aren't they? 